Hi, um, welcome um, to my channel, either welcome back or if you're new here, welcome. Um, my name's Catherine and this is my channel, Cat V Stitches. Um, I'm known as that here on YouTube and also on Instagram. It is the 19th of June, 2021. Um, I'm based in the UK. Oh, sorry, one of my cats here has come to say hello. Um, and yeah, this is my fifth, I do believe my fifth floss tube. So thank you very much for either coming back or for coming to check me out. So, um, as you will probably have seen from the title of this video, um, this has been what I would call a bit of a finish, finish fiesta this month. I decided at the start of the month that I was going to try and bang out as many of my um, wits as I could. Sorry, this is <laughs> my cat just... Um, this is Sasha. <laughs> She's, um, you know, she's decided to be a disruptor today. Um, sorry, I decided to try and finish as many of my pieces as I possibly could. Before we go in, I'm, go on, I must apologise for the light. Um, the sun is coming in and out, in and out at the moment. So if you notice the wall behind me going lighter and darker, that's what it is. I'm filming this at um, about 10 o'clock here um, in the morning because for the next couple of days um, they're going to be madly busy. I'm up at my parents tomorrow for Father's Day and um, I've got a load of tidying I need to do, spring cleaning I need to do for the next couple of days so I just thought I'd fit this in now, get it done as quickly as I can um, and yeah and show you my finishes for the month so I'm really excited about them because I tried a lot of new things with these finishes and I do have a couple of whips as well but I have mainly concentrated on trying to finish as many things as I can. So anyway without further ado because I need to get through this today get it get this done and dusted with hopefully as minimum amount of editing as possible although it is um we're a couple of minutes in and I have just waffled for the first couple of minutes but um let's get this show on the road and let's show you some of these finishes. So the first one is um, it's the garden gate. Now, this is the cross stitch that I've done for my mum. Um, I, anyone who's watched um, previous videos will know that um, over the past, I'd say about six to eight months, it's been a bit dicey, um, as it has been for, you know, a lot of people out there. But for me, um, my parents, oh, and there's Ruby. My parents have been a massive help um, during this time, um, literally to the point of I don't know what I would have done without them. So, um, as well as me basically going to their house and doing any kind of job that they possibly have had, the other thing I've done as a way of a thank you to them is I've done some cross stitch stuff. Um, so, um, in my plans, I'll show you, there's another one that I am going to be doing. My mum chose two. That she really liked so i'm gonna so i've finished one and i'm going to be doing the other one next month but this is the drawn thread garden gate so there you go okay um sorry about that i just had to stop it because there was um somebody at the door and there might be somebody else coming back sorry back to this um the drawn gate garden the garden gate so it's full of specialty stitches so on the um, flowers there um, the pink flowers there those bees which I think are absolutely amazing the butterflies and the dragonflies there so overall I am just so pleased with this and all I've done is I have finished it by lacing it and popped in this white frame um, it's not it's just a frame I got off Amazon and it's just a, a bog standard back on here and I'm getting quite good at this lace in malarkey now but um yeah I absolutely love that so it says those who enter through this gate come never too early nor stay too late so that is the first of my finishes 
So that's going off to my parents tomorrow. The next finish is my Satsuma Street one. Um, oh, it's got some cat hairs on it. Um, Happy Nest. And this one I have done as a pillow. Now, I am not in any way, shape or form, even, you could not even say I was a good sewer with a sewing machine, but I made a, made a go of it on this one. So I followed, um, Fat Quarter Shop, um, Kimberly did a tutorial on doing, um, oh, what they call envelope pillows. So where you just, um, you know, so you can just shove your um, pillow form in it. So I, ha I already had the pillow form, realised that the size I'd cut the material on this would fit perfectly on it with just a, a little bit of trimming. Bought this fabric, which I thought matched the colours, you know, primarily um, in this bird's body perfectly, and finished it off that way. Now, so long as you don't look at it too closely, um, it's not too bad. Um, it's not stuff, so obviously it's not, um, you know, it's not incredibly full. But I think that turned out brilliantly. I absolutely love it. And for my first attempt at a pillow form, at um, an envelope thing for a, for, um, for a pillow, I'm really chuffed at that. I think the colours really pop and I think it looks great as a um, pillow. So what I am going to do is I have another Satsuma one that I'm going to finish um, as a pillow. Let me just, here it is. It's Autumn Bird. I bought this at the same time as I bought Happy Nest. And I'm going to do it on the same material, which is um, my favourite, which is Platinum. Um, Swigart Platinum. It's 28 count. Um, so I'm going to do that, but... I've also got, again, bought at the same time, Forest. So, let's bring it up a bit closer for you. There you go. Again, 28 count platinum. I've already got the pieces here. So I'll just basically work my way through them and I'll have a nice little series there. And I love sewing these. The colour blocking and the bright colours. I've just really, really enjoyed it. So that's future plans so there's um finish number two Ooh, excuse me <laughs> so my next finish i'm especially pleased with this one um is again another drawn thread there and um, rapidly becoming one of my favorite ones after caterpillar not caterpillar sorry after the um cricket collection um, so the drawn thread, this is Trick or Treat. And again, this is in another pillow. I finished this as another pillow using the envelope tutorial. And this, yeah, oh, no, that fitted. There we go. Trick or Treat. So this has got little buttons, they're little, tiny little buttons there. There for the spiders and um, some specialty stitching on the um, hat there but I absolutely love that and um, I did some etoile just and sorry just in two key pieces on the ghost and the cat is black etoile now for the rest of it I did well I copied a conversion um, from Rachel Ray and um, from the call for dinky dyes and um, so it's weeks dye works um if you want it i can give it to you if you just put a comment if you want if you want the conversion that i used but it is i think rachel ray had called up a um a local an lns local needlework shop and um, when she ordered this and asked them to do the conversion for it something like that and she very kindly um well i emailed her as well because i missed where she'd put it in her video so she sent it to me but I followed it and I think this has come out wonderfully. And this material is just, it's not very expensive. It's just some, it's got some orange lines on that. So it's got, it's orange with the little black fake lines on it and matches the pumpkins nicely. And the back, 
is yeah just like that and again it's a an envelope one this was a bit harder because obviously i've trimmed it at the front and again so long as you don't look too closely at it um it looks i think that looks okay i sweated a bit over this one i've got a lot more than the happy nest one but i am really chuffed with that one and it's going to stay out all year round sorry but i worked hard on that so it's going to go on the back of the sofa and it will stay there <laughs> To be honest, happiness goes on there as well. So, and um, the cats are continually knocking it off, but I don't care. Okay, so the next finish is um, this is a red cir um, ink circle, red circle. I've got red ship of life in my brain there. So this is ink circle. Get cracking. Can I fit that in? just about <laughs> so yeah absolutely love it I mean I know I've mentioned in previous videos as I've shown this is a whip how much I've enjoyed it um we go close there for you so I did do kind of mix and match on this so mostly I use DMC but then for four, I swapped them out for the called four. So, I'll just pop that down a second. Oh, and also the lettering, I used a completely different, um, a completely different one. Um, actually, it's what I used for the lettering in October. Bear me one second. It's, oh, nope, can't remember the name of it. Um, I'll insert it at the bottom here what it is um, but for this oh no here it is put it here it's a silken colour and it's um, woods of gold so I use that for the lettering because I love the copper colour in it and then I used the Glorianas that were called for for um, golden squash, um, so that's the crowns and stars, dried pink rose, um, Arctic ice, which is the sea, and then at the last minute, um, I swapped in slate green. So there's the um, that there's the pink rose, and there's the arctic ice now the reason i had just been using the dmc for the green so it's noticed at the bottom there it's um it's a solid green line which was fine but then i noticed in the letters here there was this green here and i really liked the way the variegation looked and also all up the sides as well it was used so at the last moment i thought sod it i'll buy the actual gloriana because i can use it on other things as well because it's gorgeous and yeah and finish that off so there we go absolutely love it so this frame this was a white frame that i just a cheap a cheap white and um, it's you know it was white and cheap um wood and um, painted white so i just popped this purple on to match the purple in the letters here and just um made you know kept it rustic like this i've got this up on my wall and I think it looks absolutely brilliant. Again, just laced it up. Now this, <laughs> halfway through doing the lace up, I was like, why did I do this as a lace up job? Why didn't I just glue it down or use double sided um, tape? But then I thought, no, I'll carry on. I'll, I'll finish it off. And I'm glad I did because um, I think it's just it just looks amazing. And it was good practice as well for lacing. So there's that one. And then I have one other finish. Um, this is, so I have one other finish, it's Curse of the Raven Carriage hand, House Samplings. Now I have bought myself a kind of like journal, it's an art journal, um, but I'm putting it, at, I'm using it as a cross-stitch journal. Um, it was on sale at um, Hobbycraft here in the UK. And it's quite plain. It's just brown pages. 
Um, I am figuring out all the different things I want to stick in it. So the first one I've got in there is my very first finish. I've just used double-sided um, fabric tape on this. So there's my Lindy, sti um, Lindy um, Stitches Little Shop of Horrors. Um, and next one in here is... This is Gathering Berries. Um, again, I'm going to be sticking all stuff around it and maybe putting some lace and things um, around them just to pretty it up a bit. But this is my latest finish. This is Curse of the Raven. And I think I said this last time I did it, it I was halfway through stitching these before I realised that these were um, skeletons here. So, you know, not really um, taking notice of that. But um, yeah, absolutely love that. That was a fun thing to to stitch and to finish. So I've just popped that in here and I'm going to put some black lace around it, put some stickers and pictures around it. So this it's a good size this, so I'll be able to fit quite a lot into this, as you can see, quite a lot of pages. So those are my finishes. I am incredibly happy with them. Um, yeah, i uh, got a couple of other things that are um, on the go. I don't know if I'm going to get many more finishes done. Um, I don't think I'm going to finish anything else for the rest of this month. Oh, th there might be one, which I'm going to show you in a minute, because it is only we. Um, I don't know why I just did that. I meant to do that. It's only we. Um, but all the rest of them are kind of like big, big jobs. So um, big ass projects or BAPs. Um, so I'm going to just start focusing on, on them. Um, I'm going to try and finish my Pilgrim one first, which I'm going to show you in a minute because I have done a little bit of work on that in, over the last couple of weeks. But what I probably will do is each month I'll pick one and focus on it for this month. Do other stuff as well, but really focus on that one piece to, to move it along. I'm not going to start any other big pieces until I finish one um, and then just, just keep doing it doing it that way because I've got quite a few big pieces on the go now so I don't want to get too over overwhelmed by them because I have although I do love the process of stitching I have actually really enjoyed finishing them as well and you know putting them up on display which reminds me very quickly October my Cricut collection one all my little um buttons came through so last night, using my E6000, the Wonder Glue, I sticked them on because obviously I couldn't sew them on anymore. So there's the owl there, which I absolutely love. Um, we've got, where's the other things? Oh yeah, so we've got a leaf here. Um, we've got a little, we've got a leaf there. Can you see? Yeah, there we go, a leaf there. And then another leaf there. So I think it's just just finishes it off love finishes it off nicely so eventually what i will do is put another piece of foam cord behind this and um, i need to look for a fabric that it'll fit i mean i might i'm just wondering with that i'll have to experiment but i'm i'm gonna i might do a purple one actually i was thinking maybe something purple on another foam card behind um, foam board behind this and do that as my finish because I, I don't think I'll bother putting it in a frame because I am going to do a number of the months um one week what I'll do is I'll do a, a video of what I've got in my stash um ready to go um that's all kitted up and I've got a couple of the months that I want to do and one or two of the seasons so if I'm putting them all in frames that'd be far too expensive whereas doing it this way um which is laced up at the back and just um it's I don't know what this is it's a shiny string anyway I think you know I think that that's fine for a finish for these and I, I think it looks lovely I'm not very artistic so I'm not one of these people like um is it Priscilla? Oh, yeah, Priscilla. Um, 
um, Mama Loves Your GB and people like that who seem to be able to do these amazing displays around their finishes. I'm not able to do that. I don't have that kind of a mind that sees, um, you know, sees some um, fake, fake flowers in the shop and goes, ah, if I pair that with that, that will look amazing. I can't do that. I can appreciate it with others, though I love their finishes. Um, but no, this, um, doing the pillows, doing the doing that is my limit. Um, even using that journal, trying to plan what I want to put around them to make it look um, pretty, that's stressful for me. So it's going to be nice and simple, but I'll be happy with it. So yeah, so anyway as I was saying I probably will just stick to that just putting another piece of foam board underneath that as a border and yeah I'm, I'm just over the moon with how that looks with the little buttons on um sorry this is a bit rushed this one but um, I will now quickly move on to my whips so my first one is my um Leela Studio Halloween Quaker. Um, I have been doing this as my 25 7 piece. So for me, I've been doing 25 minutes every day, and I have pretty much kept to that. I have a tracker. Let me show you this first of all. So I produced just really quick on Excel. Oopsie. I produced a quick monthly tracker so I could keep track of what I'm doing during the month so these are my finishes for the month here and this one with all the crosses on is my Halloween Quaker now I do have a day missing there but that's because I did about an hour and a half the day before and I only did a little bit of stitching on that day anyway but yeah so that's how I'm keeping track of it so I have stuck religiously to this and as a result I have actually made quite a bit of progress so at some point in this little spiel I'll insert a picture of what it looked like last time I showed it so you can see but this is what it's looking like at the moment so I've concentrated on this side all these mot motifs here um so yeah now this is another of my pieces where I have um Oh, I, put, um, I'm not, I didn't show you the places where I went wrong and the others, so forget it. If you can't notice it, brilliant. But on this, um, I have actually mentioned this on Instagram, but that cat motif up here is out by half a count. And by the time I realised it, I was knee deep in it. I'd done a cat and I'd done a couple of those flower motifs around it. And... I was like, should I um, take it out? Should I carry on? And then somebody, very, a couple of people very helpfully noted on Instagram that, no, A, these are Quakers and they're always a bit quirky and B, you can't tell. And, you know, but people have, you know, miscount on these all the time. So there is another miscount as well on the skeletons. Um, the legs are one stitch too short and the bodies one stitch too long but it evened out in the end so again I just thought sod it I'll you know it, it all matches up with the the main thing was that it matched up with the ghost which I'd already done which it does and yeah so I'm really happy with this I can kind of see an end to this one um not June probably but in I reckon by the end of July I should have this finished because I am literally now just working on these motifs here so I'll, I'll also pop, if I've not already done so, I'll pop in a picture of what it's supposed to look like because I've forgotten to... Actually, let me see if I can find it now and I'll stick it in. There we go. So this is what it should look like. So I am working... i got this to do here and this motif. So these... So I reckon by the end of July, I should have this one finished, which I'll be incredibly happy about. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do finish wise. I might frame this one um, or put it, on a, put it on a magnetic hanging frame. I'll, I'll think about that. But this is definitely going to have pride and place on my wall. 
because I am absolutely loving it. Then at some point I do plan on doing the Christmas version of this. So that's that one. Um, now the other, there's three other ones I've worked on. So um, I will insert a picture of this one. This is the Good Morning Maui, um, my favourite murder one. Um, so this is a podcast, a true true crime podcast that I absolutely love. And the story behind this is there are two presenters. There's um, Georgia Harstark and Karen Kilgariff. And Georgia had a cat um, called Elvis, um, a Siamese cat called Elvis with slightly crossed eyes. And at the end of each po podcast, she'd say, um, Elvis wants a cookie. And the cat would meow and it like became part of it. The, you know, it was kind of like tradition at the end of the show that they would do that. Sadly, Elvis recently passed and she's got a little puppy called um, Cookie in uh, memory. But this cross stitch is basically, um, as I said, I'll, if I've not already done so, I'll insert the picture to show what it looks like. And as you can see, it says... Elvis onto cookie and this is what I've done so far on this so there's Georgia Elvis and that'll be Karen at the moment she looks like she's got half an alien head on her but yeah so um oh light went a bit funny there so this this is the one that I said will probably be a quick finish because this just took me um a few hours yesterday this is what I just did yesterday afternoon and that stitched up really quickly so I you know that one I'm, I'm I'll probably just continue on with this one just to get it finished and this I'm thinking I'm going to put on the front front cover of my journal um because it encompasses my two of my favorite things which is true crime and cats so there you go um yeah so loving that one um so that's Halloween Quaker, my favourite murder. Um, okay, so I did have another new start, and this was my Lynn Map Drexler. Um, let's see if, if the glare will allow me. Let's see if I can um, show you this without having to insert the picture. Oh, yeah, there you go. Not too bad. So that is what it will look like. So this is one where I put it in one of those um, programs. I put the picture into one of those programs that will that make it into a pattern for you. I think it was pixel art I used. So this one is going to be a big one. It's 400 by 484. And I'm using 28 count easy grid. I am doing it one over one. Um, half stitch or ten stitch, however you want to. Oh, this light is really bad. So there you go. So I just made a little start in the corner there. But I have got to say, I wish I'd have realised there was this 28, um, 28 count in this 10 stitch malarkey when I first started doing cross stitch. Because I would have done my um, other full coverage flutter on 28 count and done a half stitch. I mean... I'm, I'm not going to restart it or anything like that. And I'm quite happy with how it's looking. But this, although it doesn't look a lot, there's a lot of stitches in there. And it does not take long. It's so, well, obviously it's going to be so much quicker because you're only doing half stitch. But and that's a, a bit of a better light back here, actually. Um, yes, yeah, see, see, the sun's come out a little bit now. Um, but yeah, it's so much quicker doing it tent stitch. Um, so... I'm not going to make this my focus piece yet. I just wanted to get it started. This was just a treat for having finished as many as I finished. And um, because there are others I want to do um, finish first of all, but I just wanted to get a start on this one. Um, so yeah, so that's my um, Lim Map Drexler. I can't actually find the title of this piece. It's just it just says abstract whenever you when you whenever you look it up online. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one turns out. Um, so the other thing that I worked on, um, again, I apologise for the brisk pace here, but, um, I really just want to get this up 
opened um I, I just wanted to make sure i could show that the garden gate one before it goes to my parents but um that's why i've squeezed this video in this morning oh yep yeah, was the postman <laughs> um so this is my long dog absolutely love this one this is pilgrim um i think i'm about two thirds of the way through on this now so this is going to be my first um this is going to be my focused one my focus one until this is done um because i'm so close i can you know i can taste it um i think if i hadn't have been concentrating on getting those five finished this month i may have been able to finish it this month but i certainly do want to finish this by the end of next month by the end of july so that is my um plan to get it done so I'll insert a picture here of what it looked like last time I showed it um, and I will just basically show you what I have worked on over the last couple of weeks. So I have done that bird, so this, this, the boat and this. So this is what I have worked on this time. So um, hang on, sorry, let me just show you where the bottom of the piece is. There we go. So this is what I mean about I can almost taste that finish because that's where the bottom is. And I have, as you will have seen from the picture, I have already done the horse that's on the other side. So that's a big chunk of um, big chunk of change done. So yeah, so it's this here that needs doing and this so i'd say yeah if, if not even a third maybe i've got a quarter of it to do but i reckon oh well, hopeful you know never say never but um, i'm hoping that um by the end of july this will be done and then it's the joy of trying to figure out well trying to sort out the finish i've kind of got in my mind what i want to do but yeah i am um, can't wait to finish that one and um, i've been using the thread um for those that are new um i've been using mrs sadas peacock as my silk on that one um that's um it's either 25 count or 28 count and i'm doing it two over two so two threads over two weaves and this is it still smells gorgeous her silks always smell absolutely divine but yeah, so this is Peacock. Um, I ended up buying, because again, newbie, um, didn't quite know what I was doing, panicked that I wouldn't have enough and ended up buying two of the massive hanks of this silk. I won't even get through one on this. But as I've said previously, I'm not mad about that because I absolutely love this colour. Um, and so I've been using it in other things. So a couple of the motifs aren't Halloween Quaker in this. Um, I've got All Souls V Laden that I'm using this on. Um, so yeah, so I'm really, I'm really happy how this has turned out. Um, so I can't wait to get that one finished. Um, okay, so my only other whip is my knitting whip. So this is my Land of Sweets cowl. I am now about 73% complete on this um, so there we go oops absolutely so I'm using my fiber space vivacious colors on this I have six colors um, they are um, this is four ply which I think is fingering in um the us but it's four ply here in the uk um i'm i chose six colors and i'm just repeating them i think last time um i was in this section here and i had royally screwed up on it i'd had to um frog it back um or tink it back about three times 
and then started again, realised there was a small mistake in it, but at that point I fudged it, did a couple of rows, looked at it and realised you couldn't tell that by sheer accident I'd managed to fix it in a way that pretty much covered up what I did. So I was like, nope, I'm just carrying on and I'm glad I did because now as I'm looking at it, I can't even tell where it was that I made the mistake. So perfectly happy with that. And as I said, I am about 74% done. So this, um, hopefully, will be finished in the next couple but of yeah, weeks. I'm, I'm absolutely loving the colours in that. My favourite is this this pink one here. I think these make just these lovely bands. I think I've got one more lot of it to come just up here. So, yeah. the very, it's, it's a lovely variegation in this um, wool as well. So that is all just one um one skein and you know you get this lovely lighter pink coming through on it as well so yeah really really happy with considering this is like my first knit using these kind of specialty knit ones with the lace and everything um okay so yeah i have had to restart it a couple of times or knit um frog back a couple of times but i'm really happy with how that's turned out so those are, yep, that's all my whips. So what I'll quickly do is I'm going to let you know what my plans are going to be for the next couple of weeks. So that'll encompass the end of June and the start of July. So I know there's a tradition to do, um, I think it's Jolly July, where you do some Christmas stitching in July. So I am planning on doing that. But the piece I have chosen is Prairie Moon Merry Xmas. Um, now I have got the threads for this. Um, again, I'm, I'm doing a mixture of DMC and some of the call for. Um, let's see, so um, the red, for example, the red I have bought I think it's a bell soir. I have actually bought the red for that because that you know I really want that to pop. Um, but I've but I've bought from one two three stitch. It's um picture this plus haunted. So there you go. So my plan had been to do this on thirty two count, and that's the size of the material I got. But I accidentally, and I went back and checked this. I accidentally put it through as twenty eight count. Now, this is a 12 by 17 piece and it will, I'm not, I'm not buying another one for 32 counts. Ugh. Um, so what I'm, I'm going to use this, but it'll mean on one side, there'll be like a one inch margin. Um, but since I'll be, it'll be me that'll finish it. Um, I'll just work with it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to, um, faff about with returning and I don't even know what the return policy would be but returning and getting the 32 count I'll just use the 28 count and it's my own fault for not taking note of what I was doing but that's yeah I plan on starting this one in July and hopefully finishing it in July um so that's one of the things I'm planning on starting the other is as I mentioned towards the beginning of the video the other is the um my second piece for my mum so this is another this is the other one she chose again it's a drawn thread one and it's for those who sing there we go it says those who wish to sing always find a song so my mum loves singing she's in um, her choir at church so she just fell in love with this one and now i've got this from the shop um, that I mentioned in my previous video, it's the Nimble Thimble, um, and what they have done is um, kitted it up for me um, with the, so there is my material. Um, I think this is the called for, which is Summer Khaki, 32 count bell pass linen, summer khaki and the threads that they put on a thread card for you 
and these are a mixture of um da -da -da, dinky dyes with a bit of needle point silk in there so these two are my mpis and these are dinky dyes so it just cuts down on the cost you don't have to pay for full skeins when you don't need them so that's all kitted up so i'll be starting that in july as well and hopefully by the end of August, this one will be completed. Um, so um, for the past couple of weeks, with regards to um, what I've been listening to, um, I've actually got back into all my Terry Pratchett stuff. He is my favourite author on the planet. On the planet. Um, I read all his books multiple times. I have... Um, I'm looking over there because they're over there, but I have a couple of figurines from him. Now, I've not gone mad and bought every single figurine that's ever been done because there are many of them. But for my for my favourite characters, I bought the figurines and um, I'll insert a picture here. Um, and I've also got a couple of the jigsaw, uh, some of his jigsaw puzzles that I did at the start of the um, start of this this pandemic when I was first um on furlough um my i started off doing jigsaws then progressed to diamond painting then progressed to um cross stitch and um, which then overtook my entire life but um i managed to get from ebay before prices started jacking up when everybody started doing jigsaws some of his early jigsaw puzzles which i was really happy about um terry pratchett basically was one of the first authors along with David Eddings who I kind of became obsessed with and um, started reading multiple books for and um, I was in my I think I was about 11 and it was my elder brother actually he loved fantasy novels so he kind of well one of my brothers anyway he kind of um I would pinch his books basically because I found the young adult books boring so he was a couple of years older than me, so he could use the adult library um, at that point. So he'd come home with the, with Terry Pratchett and Stephen King and things like that. And I'd pinch his books um, before he returned them back. And Stephen King, I found I wasn't so much... I mean, I enjoyed his stories and that, but I wasn't so much a horror fan. But fantasy novels I just loved. So this, So from that moment on, I became obsessed with Terry Pratchett all the stuff he wrote so I, as I said I have all I have all his books um I have lots of the little um diaries that have come out each year and the maps and the, you know and eventually I've built up quite a collection of all of stuff um but what I hadn't done until the last couple of months was listen to his audio books so what I've slowly started doing is listening um, to all his audio books and it gives you a whole new appreciation of them. Um, so that's what I've been doing the past couple of weeks um, as I've been stitching is I've been listening to, I've started on the City Watch books, I've been listening to them and I've been absolutely loving them. So anyone who is a Terry Pratchett fan who has read the books, I really would recommend if you can to get the the unabridged version so the i mean they're about 10 hours long some of them but you really do get a new appreciation for the books so i've been really enjoying that and i've also been um two new podcasts just some comedy ones just to lighten up the mood um so the smartless which is um sean hayes um will arnett and Justin, um, Justin Bateman, they do a podcast where they have a guest come on, and they're just hilarious. And Conan O'Brien needs a friend. Um, I know some people can take or leave Conan O'Brien, but I just, I think he's, you know, he's, he's a clever guy, and I, I just think he's really funny. So I've, I've really enjoyed listening to them. So that's what I've been listening to the past couple of weeks, when I've not been working and doing other stuff. But um, yeah, so keeps me going, keeps me happy keeps me stitching so yeah um so those are my recommendations anyway for anyone who's who's wanting um some good some good listens while as they're stitching 
but anyway I'm going to leave it there um I've got my first job when I finish this and maybe that's why this is a bit longer than I thought it was going to be because I honestly don't want to do this next job but um every couple of weeks um you know I have five cats yes five cats and um every now and then the cat litter trays yes we are getting to details here the cat litter trays need to be disinfected so not just cleaned out and everything which gets done regularly but they need a proper scrub down and all of that so that's my next job for five cat litter trays so yeah that's a fun job and um, luckily it's fairly nice weather although it is clouding over a little bit it's been glorious sunshine and so the day I decide to do this in my back garden it's decided to cloud up a little bit but anyway yeah that's my first job and then hoovering up the entire house and polishing and things like that and yeah I think I may also have to throw out some house plants that I may have accidentally killed by overwatering. anyway sorry TMI there but <laughs> So that's that's the rest of my day today and then tomorrow as I said I'm going up to my parents for Father's Day to do whatever jobs they need doing and then Monday I'm going to be um, cleaning my carpet so yay fun couple of days um but I will leave this here um if you like if you like this please give me a thumbs up and if you're not already um please um if you've not already done so please do subscribe um or not <laughs> But um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, any questions or any comments, please let me know in comments below. I will always try to respond to any comments that are on there, even if it's just to say thank you for commenting and for watching. But I hope you have a lovely day today. Um, I'm friend of you for tomorrow. I hope you have a lovely Father's Day. Um, and yeah, I will hopefully see you in the next couple of weeks. Um, bye.